In 2019, the world's media covered a groundbreaking event in astronomy. The first ever image of a black hole was obtained. This historic photograph, which shows a sphere of red gas with a distinct dark circular center, has attracted the enormous attention of billions of people around the world. The black hole depicted in the image, located in the galaxy M87, 53 million light years away from Earth, became major news around the world. Its significance has transcended science, sparking interest in popular culture, including popular science shows and movies. This black hole, discovered by the Event Horizon Telescope, has a mass six billion times that of the Sun. Remarkably, its silhouette can encompass our entire solar system, including even Pluto. To obtain such an unprecedented image required the construction of an exceptionally powerful super telescope. Traditional radio telescopes were not enough to pick up the faint signals emitted by such a distant object. Therefore, scientists combined data from five different telescopes located around the world, and with the help of supercomputers, carefully aligned and synchronized the signals received from each of them. The resulting colossal radio telescope, spanning the dimensions of our planet, would possess the capability to discern an orange resting on the surface of the moon. This achievement, alongside other significant astronomical breakthroughs, sparked a resurgence of interest in Einstein's theory of gravity, which had waned over the preceding five decades. The equations governing the general theory of relativity proved exceedingly intricate, and experiments pertaining to gravity incurred substantial costs, necessitating sensors spanning kilometers in size. Ironically, despite Einstein's own skepticism towards quantum theory, the contemporary resurgence of research in relativity theory stems from the convergence of quantum theory and general relativity. Over the past half century, another theory has witnessed fluctuations in attention a theory capable of reconciling quantum mechanics, which delves into the realm of elementary particles, with Einstein's theory, which elucidates phenomena such as black holes, the Big Bang, and the universe's expansion. This concept revolves around the preservation of information even within black holes. Today, we delve into the remarkable evolution of string theory, which has transformed from a single formula into a comprehensive discipline, filling entire libraries with research papers. It now serves as the foundational framework for much of the pioneering research conducted in the world's foremost laboratories. This discussion follows on from our previous exploration of the theory of everything, drawing from insights found in Michio Kaku's book, The God Equation, The Quest for a Theory of Everything. Michio Kaku, a distinguished American theoretical physicist, has dedicated his efforts to string theory since 1968. Within his book, he offers an impartial analysis of string theory, encompassing its groundbreaking discoveries as well as its limitations. Throughout this video, you'll uncover why the quest for a theory of everything has captivated the imaginations of the most influential scientists worldwide, and why string theory elicits such fervent debate and enthusiasm. As we conclude, we briefly touch upon the quest to unravel the universe's meaning and origins, and explore the conception of God that Albert Einstein embraced. Throughout history, as we venture into understanding the universe's fundamental structure, humans have crafted concepts to make sense of our surroundings. These ideas undergo rigorous examination through the scientific method, enabling us to discern their worth and what can we toss into the dustbin of history. However, as our comprehension deepens, certain concepts, like string theory, grow more intricate and occasionally perplexing. String theory, often misunderstood, endeavors to illuminate the very fabric of our universe's existence. Its validity and practicality remain subjects of ongoing contention. Is it a groundbreaking revelation or mere conjecture? Is it a comprehensive theory of everything or theory of nothing? Thus far, quantum mechanics stands as humanity's most precise realm of knowledge. Its predictions have been validated to an astonishing degree of precision, extending to 11 decimal places. Quantum mechanics delves into the subatomic realm, yet elementary particles are so minute that conventional electromagnetic waves used to observe most objects prove too large to interact with them. Efforts to observe these particles using higher energy waves inadvertently perturb them, a phenomenon rooted in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle which serves as a cornerstone of quantum mechanics. However, 
Another interpretation, proposed by Hugh Everett, suggests that every potential outcome of an event unfolds in parallel universes, constituting the multiverse. Thus, when we measure the position of an elementary particle, we effectively ascertain our current location within these parallel universes. The concept of the multiverse not only enriches our comprehension of quantum physics, but also offers a fresh perspective on the very nature of reality itself. While the standard model treats particles as infinitesimal points in space, each endowed with distinct properties such as electric charge and mass, the notion of the multiverse suggests a vastly complex and interconnected tapestry of potential realities. Despite its occasional limitations, this approach has demonstrated remarkable effectiveness, serving as the foundation of the standard model of particle physics and yielding predictions of extraordinary precision. For instance, it accurately forecasts the properties of matter in the universe's early stages, tracing back to moments, mere fractions of a second, following the Big Bang. This comprehensive framework, encapsulating our quantum universe, consists of 36 quarks and antiquarks, 12 weakly interacting particles and antiparticles called leptons, along with a multitude of Yang-Mills fields and the Higgs boson. While this description may seem complex, the matter comprising our visible universe primarily consists of particles such as electrons, quarks, and neutrinos. These particles interact by exchanging various intermediary particles to transmit forces between them. For instance, the electromagnetic force operates through the exchange of photons. The diverse array of particles is organized within the standard model, categorizing them into two principal groups. Fermions, which predominantly constitute matter, and bosons, primarily responsible for mediating interactions. However, the inclusion of gravity in this model represents a serious obstacle, since it is gravity that governs the large-scale behavior of the universe. Previous attempts of physicists to integrate gravitation into the standard model were foiled by insurmountable difficulties. When attempting to integrate gravity with quantum mechanics, the resulting quantum corrections to gravity, instead of being tiny, turned out to be infinite making them meaningless. Consequently, the standard model does not allow us to solve some cosmic mysteries, such as the events preceding the Big Bang and the inner workings of black holes. Einstein's general theory of relativity does not treat gravity as a force transmitted by particles, but rather as a geometric attribute of space-time itself. A deep conflict arises from the inconsistency between the uncertainty inherent in the quantum realm and the need for absolute precision in describing the geometry of space-time. In the search for a reconciliation with this inconsistency, string theory emerged. According to this theory, elementary particles are not infinitesimal points, but rather the shape of vibrations of tiny strings. This elegant solution encompasses all fundamental forces, including gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear interactions, providing a unified theory of the universe. In this framework, particles are composed of minuscule one-dimensional strings that can exist in either open or closed configurations. Analogous to tiny rubber bands, these strings possess tension and can vibrate in various modes, much like the strings of a violin producing different harmonics. These vibrations correspond to different types of particles at the macroscopic level. Intriguingly, certain vibrational patterns of these strings mimic the behavior of known particles such as photons, offering a fresh perspective on the universe's fundamental constituents. String theory introduces a captivating concept regarding gravity. Specific modes of vibration correspond to gravitons, theoretically elucidating gravity at the quantum level. The dynamics and interactions of these strings play a pivotal role. Consider, for instance, the scenario of a photon directed towards a target. At the quantum level, its behavior is determined statistically, that is, through the probability of different outcomes. In the standard model, this entails summing up all potential trajectories and interactions. However, the advent of string theory has revolutionized this approach. Rather than particles being mere points with trajectories, they are now envisioned as strings tracing surfaces through time. This transition to string theory necessitates considering all conceivable configurations of strings over time, encompassing scenarios where strings separate, emit particles, or merge by absorbing particles. 
such a revolutionary shift in perspective, however, inevitably encountered challenges almost immediately. For instance, early iterations of the theory only predicted bosonic particles like photons or gravitons, omitting fermions. Additionally, it foresaw the existence of tachyons, particles with imaginary mass, and required a universe with 26 dimensions, a far cry from the four-dimensional space-time we observe. To solve these problems, the theory evolved into superstring theory, which involves spinners attached to strings. No, not that kind. This addition makes it possible to predict fermions and eliminate the tachyon problem. Superstring theory also introduces supersymmetry, assuming a fundamental symmetry between bosons and fermions. However, this changes the dimensionality requirements of the universe to 10. Michio Kaku writes, I still remember the shock that physicists felt when string theory suddenly postulated that we live in a 10-dimensional universe. Most physicists saw this as proof of the theory's fallacy. When John Schwartz, one of the leading architects of string theory, ran into Richard Feynman in a Caltech elevator, he would often tease him by asking, well, John, how many dimensions are you in today? Perhaps the solution to this phenomenon lies in the concept of compact dimensions. Our universe may be a three-dimensional slice of a larger, multi-dimensional space, or some dimensions may be coiled at scales too small to observe. Just as an ant perceives a multi-dimensional straw, although it has length and thickness for an ant that perceives only its surface, the thickness remains unobservable. From our perspective, some dimensions remain invisible. Consequently, particles' movements may appear slower than they truly are, as we only observe a fraction of their total motion, thus attributing mass to them. This notion underpins the concept of compactified extra dimensions, which proposes a mechanism through which particles can acquire significant mass. However, verifying this concept through particle accelerators currently exceeds our technological capabilities, but we'll delve into that further shortly. The existence of additional dimensions would expand the array of vibrational modes available in string theory, resulting in a broader spectrum of potential particle types. Various methods of compactifying these dimensions exist, each yielding a distinct theoretical universe characterized by unique particle behaviors. By selecting a specific method of compactification, we could align our theoretical predictions with the observed particles in our universe. However, it remains unclear why our universe manifests the particular particle types delineated in the standard model and not others. Some theories propose that the universe's geometry may have undergone changes over time, transitioning between different forms of compactification. This notion suggests that the laws of physics might have evolved and shifted since the universe's inception. Thus, superstring theory already stands as remarkably comprehensive. At its core, lies supersymmetry, which elegantly reconciles bosons and fermions constituting the most expansive symmetry ever uncovered in physics. This symmetry permits the integration of all known particles into a unified whole. We stand at the threshold of the ultimate stage in string theory's evolution, approaching a deeper comprehension of its fundamental physical principles. One of the primary puzzles lies in deriving the entire theory from a single equation. In 1995, string theory underwent a metamorphosis, becoming M-theory. Previously, the original string theory was five separate models of quantum gravity, each consistent and well-defined, but differing in the organization of spins. The main question then was formulated as follows. Why are there exactly five theories? The American theoretical physicist Edward Witten proposed an answer in 1995 by discovering a hidden 11-dimensional theory called M-theory. The concept is rooted in membranes, resembling spherical surfaces. It was revealed that the five string theories are merely distinct mathematical interpretations of the same M theory. In 1997, Juan Maldacena achieved a groundbreaking feat, stirring the physics community with what appeared to be the impossible. He demonstrated the mathematical equivalence between the supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory, which characterizes elementary particles in four dimensions, and string theory in 10 dimensions. This breakthrough sparked immense interest among scientists, and within two decades, Maldacena's work became the most referenced paper in high-energy physics. This highlights two significant aspects of string theory, symmetry and duality, which are distinct yet interconnected. 
Symmetry denotes the equation's unchanged nature upon rearranging its components, while duality showcases the mathematical equality between two disparate theories. An instance of duality in Maxwell's equations is the interchangeability of electric and magnetic fields. Similarly, it was discovered that the five distinct string theories in ten dimensions were dual to each other, ultimately representing various facets of a singular, eleven-dimensional M-theory. However, Maldacena's breakthrough extended even further, revealing a duality between strings in ten dimensions and Yang Mill's theory in four dimensions. This revelation unveiled profound and unexpected connections between gravitational and nuclear interactions across different dimensions. Typically, dualities are identified between objects of the same dimension, but Maldacena's duality between differing dimensions was unprecedented. This discovery holds significance beyond academia with wide-ranging implications. Previously, it was believed that Yang Mill's gauge theory in four dimensions best described nuclear interactions. However, given the duality between string theory in ten dimensions, the understanding of nuclear interactions may now hinge on quantum gravity theory. In essence, fundamental aspects of nuclear interaction, such as the proton's mass, can be most accurately elucidated through the framework of string theory. Although string theory demonstrates clear theoretical success, beauty and symmetry, its ambitious claims and conclusions naturally attract the attention of an army of critics. It brings to mind the words of Carl Sagan, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Also, one is reminded of the words of Wolfgang Pauli, who could masterfully besiege a person, for example by saying, what you just told me was so confusing that it is impossible to understand whether it is nonsense or not. He was also fond of saying, I don't mind that you think slowly, but I'm not at all satisfied that you publish faster than you think. In the ongoing debate surrounding string theory, physicists find themselves divided into two factions, echoing the rift witnessed during the Sixth Solvay Congress in 1930, where Einstein and Niels Bohr clashed over quantum theory. That's what my previous video about the theory of everything is about. Even Nobel laureates have adopted contrasting stances. Sheldon Glashow has criticized string theory for its lack of testable predictions, while Gerard Hooft has likened the attention given to the theory to the fervor surrounding American television series. Simultaneously, other scientists such as David Gross have lauded the theory, highlighting its alignment with Einstein's geometric principles. And Steven Weinberg has likened the evolution of string theory to the quest for the North Pole. Glashow, despite being critical of string theory, acknowledges being in the minority within this debate, drawing a comparison to a dinosaur among mammals. The primary arguments against string theory revolve around its perceived hype, the unreliability of symmetry as a gauge for physics, its assumption of multiple universes, and, most significantly, its inability to be empirically confirmed. Different examples can be given here. Paul Dirac argued that scientific work should strive for mathematical beauty. He even discovered his famous electron theory by playing with mathematical formulas. However, Despite the importance of beauty in physics, as Sabine Hussenfeld had noted, many beautiful theories have turned out to be wrong, and relying on beauty alone is not the best strategy. It is crucial to recognize that certain aspects of string theory, such as supersymmetry, hold significance in physics. Despite the absence of empirical evidence for supersymmetry thus far, it has been demonstrated to be essential for rectifying flaws in quantum theory by mutually compensating bosons and fermions and addressing divergences inherent in the theory of quantum gravity. While not every aesthetically pleasing theory proves to be true, it is noteworthy that all established fundamental physical theories exhibit inherent beauty and symmetry. The primary challenge with string theory lies in its lack of testability. The energy associated with gravitons, referred to as the Planck energy, surpasses the capacity of the Large Hadron Collider by an astronomical margin. To put it into perspective, testing string theory would necessitate constructing a particle accelerator on a galactic scale. Furthermore, each solution within string theory corresponds to a distinct universe with seemingly infinite variations. Directly verifying the theory would entail creating entirely new universes within a laboratory setting. Thus, the ability to directly test the theory lies beyond human capabilities, as it pertains to universes rather than individual atoms or molecules. Consequently, 
it appears that string theory fails to meet the fundamental criterion of any scientific theory, verifiability. Nonetheless, proponents of the theory do not perceive this as a significant issue. Typically, scientific inquiry relies on indirect methods of investigation, such as studying echoes from celestial phenomena like the Sun or the Big Bang. In our quest, we search for echoes originating from the 10th and 11th dimensions, believing that evidence supporting string theory surrounds us. Rather than attempting direct observation, we strive to discern these echoes. One such potential signal from hyperspace may be the presence of dark matter. Previously, it was assumed that the universe primarily consisted of atoms. However, it was astonishing to discover that atoms constitute only a small fraction, 4.9% of the universe's total mass. The majority of the universe lies beyond our direct observation, existing in the form of dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter, comprising nearly 27% of the universe's mass, envelops galaxies and prevents them from collapsing. Meanwhile, dark energy, constituting 68% of the universe's mass, is the force within empty space that drives galaxies apart. Perhaps within this invisible universe lies the evidence for the theory of everything. Dark matter, though enigmatic and invisible, serves as the cohesive force that binds our Milky Way galaxy together and prevents its constituent stars from dispersing. Dark matter possesses mass, but lacks charge, and it does not interact with electromagnetic forces. Consequently, if one were to attempt to grasp it, it would pass through their hand, traverse through the Earth, and emerge on the opposite side, influenced solely by gravitational forces that gradually alter its trajectory back to its original location. Despite its seemingly improbable nature, the existence of dark matter is deemed necessary. Analysis of the Milky Way's rotation and application of Newton's laws reveal that the observable mass within a galaxy is insufficient to counteract the centrifugal force. Without additional stabilizing factors, galaxies would become unstable, yet they have persisted for billions of years. Consequently, it is inferred that either Newton's laws do not fully apply to galaxies, or an invisible substance maintains their stability. This scenario mirrors the discovery of Neptune, where its existence was deduced mathematically to explain Uranus's orbital anomalies. Presently, one of the primary candidates for dark matter is weakly interacting massive particles, such as Photino, the supersymmetric counterpart of the photon. Photino is characterized by its stability, mass, invisibility, and lack of charge, aligning with the properties attributed to dark matter. The Earth is believed to traverse through a stream of dark matter that can interact with protons, leading to their decay into elementary particles. To detect such collisions, large detectors filled with liquids like xenon and argon have been deployed. Approximately 20 research groups worldwide, often situated in underground mines to minimize interference from cosmic rays, are actively searching for dark matter. If collisions involving dark matter particles are successfully detected, scientists will then proceed to study their properties and compare them with the inferred characteristics of Photino. Should the experimental data on dark matter align with the predictions of string theory, it would serve as compelling evidence for the validity of the path. Pursued by physicists, another avenue for potentially obtaining evidence of Photino exists through the development of the next generation of particle accelerators, the construction of which is currently underway. In Japan, efforts persist in constructing an international linear collider. In this apparatus, electrons will collide with anti-electrons. Unlike protons, electrons are genuinely elementary particles, leading to cleaner collisions that require less energy. Collisions at an energy level of 250 billion electron volts are anticipated to produce Higgs bosons. China has achieved a significant milestone by finalizing the design of crucial equipment for a circular electron-positron collider, boasting a circumference of 100 kilometers. This dimension dwarfs that of the Large Hadron Collider, nearly quadrupling its size. The collider is slated to commence operations by 2030, reaching an energy level of 240 billion electron volts. Furthermore, there are blueprints to upgrade it into a proton collider by 2040, enabling it to attain an energy level of approximately 100 terelectron volts. CERN is constructing the receiver for the Large Hadron Collider, known as the Circular Collider of the Future. This collider aims to reach an energy level of 100 trillion electron volts and will have a circumference of around 100 kilometers. 
The development of these accelerators holds promise for detecting dark matter. If detected, the properties of dark matter particles can be compared to the predictions of string theory, which also suggests the potential creation of miniature black holes in these accelerators. These small black holes would be stable and energetically akin to elementary particles rather than collapsing stars. Additionally, there is anticipation that scientists will utilize the most significant particle accelerator of all time, the Big Bang itself, for research. Its radiation could offer insights into the enigmas of dark matter and dark energy. The remnants or lingering radiation from the Big Bang are readily detectable, and satellites are presently observing this radiation with remarkable precision. The photographs show that the background microwave radiation appears remarkably uniform, only slightly disrupted by barely perceptible ripples. The ripples are thought to reflect tiny quantum fluctuations produced during the cosmic event known as the Big Bang. However, there are unexplained anomalies within this relic radiation. Some believe that these anomalies are evidence of interactions with other universes. In particular, there is a cold spot in the uniform radiation, an irregularly cold region that could signify the remnants of collisions or communication between our universe and a parallel universe in the early stages of cosmic evolution. To improve the accuracy of these measurements, there are plans to deploy gravitational wave detectors in space. Einstein's 1916 theory suggested that gravity propagates as waves, but it wasn't until a century later that scientists successfully detected gravitational waves resulting from the merger of two black holes. Massive detectors configured in an L shape and located in Louisiana and Washington, D.C., detected these waves. For this groundbreaking achievement, physicists Rainer Weiss, Kip Thorne, and Barry Barish were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2017. The LISA Laser Interferometry Space Antenna comprises three satellites interconnected by laser beams, positioned in space to detect even the slightest gravitational fluctuations, stemming from the Big Bang, the primary aim of this initiative is to capture gravitational waves originating from the Big Bang and then extrapolate this data to infer the state of the universe prior to this cosmic event. This data will be cross-referenced with predictions from various formulations of string theory, offering potential insights into the pre-Big Bang multiverse. Future advancements beyond LISA may enable the acquisition of early images of our universe, potentially unveiling evidence of connections between our universe and a broader cosmic framework. However, the concept of a multiverse containing numerous parallel universes, some surpassing even the most extravagant imaginings of Hollywood, presents significant theoretical challenges. String theory presents a plethora of solutions each delineating a distinct gravitational theory. Within certain theoretical constructs, such as some derived from string theory, the proton's instability renders the existence of complex matter, such as atoms and molecules, untenable, leaving behind only a milieu of elementary particles. This raises doubts regarding the actual existence of these alternate universes and challenges the predictive capacity of the theory as it cannot definitively identify which of these universes corresponds to reality. However, this quandary is not unique to string theory. Similarly, the equations formulated by Newton and Maxwell yield an infinite array of solutions contingent upon initial conditions. Consequently, any comprehensive theory, including a purported theory of everything, is likely to yield an infinite spectrum of solutions dependent on these initial parameters. Yet, the conundrum arises. How does one define the initial conditions of the entire universe? This necessitates the external imposition of the Big Bang condition, effectively introduced manually. Ideally, the theory itself would delineate the conditions, such as temperature, density, and composition, that precipitated the Big Bang event. String theory presents numerous possibilities, encompassing our universe among them, yet likely incapable of singularly predicting any one universe. This dilemma is termed the string theory landscape. 
Various proposals have emerged to address this issue, yet none have gained widespread acceptance. One such proposal is the Anthropic Principle, positing that our universe is distinct because conscious life, capable of contemplating this matter, exists. Essentially, while multiple universes may exist, ours specifically fosters conditions conducive to the emergence of intelligent life. It is conjectured that the initial conditions of the Big Bang were orchestrated to permit the existence of life. This notion aligns with the hypothesis of universe evolution, which suggests that a universe where intelligent life can arise evolves to a stage where it initiates the Big Bang, giving rise to a new universe suitable for life, a form of universe replication via natural selection. Additionally, the anthropic principle elucidates why the physical constants of the universe are finely tuned for life to thrive. Theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson observed that the universe appears to have been finely tuned for our emergence. Had the nuclear interaction been weaker, the sun would not have ignited, and if stronger, it would have burned out billions of years ago. Similarly, gravity seems precisely calibrated to facilitate the formation of stars and planets, essential for life. It's as if the universe is a lottery and we've won the jackpot. However, within the framework of the multiverse theory, this suggests the existence of numerous lifeless universes. Consequently, the anthropic principle serves to differentiate our universe from many others in the multiverse landscape by the presence of intelligent life. Michio Kaku, who has dedicated over 50 years to studying string theory, believes it has yet to reach its definitive formulation, making it premature to compare it to the observable universe. String theory is undergoing a remarkably unconventional evolution, continuously unveiling new mathematical frameworks and concepts. Over the past five decades, three significant revolutions have reshaped our comprehension of the theory. Nonetheless, the ultimate principles of the theory remain elusive, postponing its experimental verification until they are unearthed. Michio Kaku likens the exploration of string theory to a quest for treasure in the Egyptian desert. Picture stumbling upon a modest rock protruding from the sand, only to realize it marks the summit of a vast pyramid. As you meticulously excavate, you uncover astonishing chambers and artwork concealed within the pyramid's depths. Navigating through numerous levels, you draw closer to the ultimate door, concealing the enigma of the pyramid's architects. Kaku contends that we have yet to reach the deepest stratum in our exploration of string theory, because each analysis yields fresh mathematical revelations. While string theory finds expression through string field theory via a concise equation, in ten dimensions, five such equations become necessary. Although string theory can be articulated through field theory, the same cannot yet be said for M-theory. In the future, there is optimism among physicists that a singular equation encompassing M-theory will be discovered. Describing the vibrations of M-theory membranes in various ways poses challenges within the framework of field theory. Consequently, M-theory necessitates numerous equations, albeit all describing the same underlying theory. Expressing M-theory as a field theory would enable it to be derived from a solitary equation. The ultimate validation of string theory may not lie in vast particle accelerators, but rather in the formulation of its definitive mathematical structure. The need for experimental proof may diminish if the theory can deduce the masses of quarks and other elementary particles from foundational principles. In the standard model, approximately 20 parameters are manually inputted should string theory accurately compute these fundamental constants. It would mark a historic milestone. Deriving the known parameters of the universe from a singular equation would serve as confirmation of its validity. Various approaches to the landscape problem are being explored. One hypothesis suggests that multiple universes are inherently unstable and eventually collapse into our familiar universe. Instead of viewing the vacuum as empty space, it can be envisioned as a region in which microscopic universes constantly emerge and disappear resembling bubbles in foam. Stephen Hawking called this concept space-time foam. Most of these microscopic universes are fleeting, dissipating almost instantaneously. When the theory is finalized, it will probably show that most alternative universes are transient, existing for only a fraction of a second, about Planck time, about 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds. In contrast, the enormous age of our universe, 13.8 billion years, sets it apart from an infinite number of other universes. 
If the final equation proves too complex to solve manually, computers may have to be enlisted. For example, in quark theory, computers have been used to approximate space-time as a lattice, allowing the Yang-Mills interaction responsible for binding quarks inside a proton to be modeled. A similar approach could involve superimposing M-theory on the lattice for the calculations. In such a scenario, the supercomputer results could reveal the characteristics of our universe. Perhaps confirmation of string theory will come from the next generation of particle gas pedals housed in underground facilities or from gravitational wave detectors in space. Alternatively, revelation could come from someone revealing the final mathematical formulation of the theory for comparison with experimental data. Michio Kaku is confident that we will find a theory of everything. But this begs the question, where did string theory itself come from? If it has a grand design, did it have a creator? If so, does the universe have a purpose and meaning? We have seen how mastering the four fundamental forces of nature has led not only to the unraveling of many of its mysteries, but also to scientific and technological revolutions that have changed the course of civilization. Newton, by formulating the laws of motion and gravity, launched the Industrial Revolution. The revelation of the unity between electricity and magnetism by Faraday and Maxwell sparked the electrical revolution, while Einstein and quantum physicists' exploration of the probabilistic, relativistic nature of reality laid the groundwork for modern high technology. As we approach a theory of everything that encompasses all four fundamental interactions, envisioning its implications raises intriguing questions about how it would reshape our thinking, lifestyles, and perception of the universe. In our daily lives, the impact of such a theory is likely to be minimal. Each solution within the theory of everything corresponds to a distinct universe, with energy scales reaching the Planck energy level, far exceeding that of the Large Hadron Collider. These concepts primarily pertain to the mysteries surrounding the birth of the universe and phenomena like black holes, which don't directly affect our day-to-day -day experiences. However, the philosophical implications of such a theory could profoundly influence our lives. It could provide answers to existential questions about time, the origins of the world, and the universe itself. Reflecting on our place in nature and our relationship to the cosmos, as emphasized by the great zoologist Thomas Huxley in 1863, may take on renewed significance. Einstein's secretary, Helen Dokas, once said that Einstein was drowning in a flood of letters, asking him to explain the meaning of life and asking if he believed in God. Einstein himself said that he was unable to answer all these questions about the meaning of the universe. Einstein's letter about God was sold for almost three million dollars, indicating a deep interest in the subject. In his letters, Einstein pondered the meaning of life and God, noting the differences between a personal God and Spinoza's God, who represents order in the universe. He believed in God, but as a symbol of order and regularity, characterizing the beauty and simplicity of the universe. Einstein compared himself to a child in a huge library, trying to unravel the mysteries of the universe. He left open the question of who created these books, and does the universe have a librarian, which entails questions about the origin of physical laws and whether the universe has a purpose. In addition, Einstein was plagued by another question. Did God have a choice in creating the universe? Questions about the existence of God become less certain when we try to apply logic to proving or disproving them. Stephen Hawking, for example, did not believe in God, claiming that the Big Bang happened in an instant, so God simply did not have time to create the universe as we see it. In Einstein's original theory, the universe expanded almost instantaneously. In the context of the multiverse, it is just one of many bubbles appearing and disappearing constantly. This implies that time may have existed before our universe. The multiverse could be eternal, leaving the question of God's existence unanswered. Theologians, on the other hand, have been searching for centuries for their answers. St. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century attempted to prove the existence of God through logic. He offered five famous proofs for the existence of God. These proofs are interesting because even today, they raise profound questions relevant to the theory of everything. Two of them overlap with the others, so the proofs can be reduced to three points. The cosmological proof. Bodies and objects move because they are pushed. That is, something sets them in motion. But what was the prime mover that started the universe must be God. Teleological proof. 
Everywhere around us we see objects of great complexity, but every construction needs a constructor. First designer was God. Ontological proof. God is the most perfect entity imaginable. Yet it is imaginable that God does not exist. But if God did not exist, he could not be perfect. Therefore, he exists. In the 19th century, Kant criticized the ontological proof by distinguishing between perfection and existence as distinct concepts. However, other arguments for the existence of a deity need reconsideration in light of modern scientific advancements and the concept of a unified theory encompassing all fundamental forces. Teleological argument, which posits design in nature, faces challenges from evolutionary theory, which explains the intricacies of life through natural selection. Similarly, the cosmological argument becomes more intricate with the introduction of the multiverse concept. While the multiverse theory may account for the origin of the universe, it prompts inquiries into the origin of the multiverse itself, and subsequently the origin of the unified theory. Physics currently lacks explanations for the origins of physical laws, leaving the question of prime mover unresolved. The symmetry underlying the proposed theory of everything derives from profound mathematical principles. The source of mathematics itself presents a profound question. The universe displays remarkable beauty, organization, and simplicity, as evidenced by the fact that all known physical laws can be summarized on a single sheet of paper. This sheet accommodates Einstein's theory of relativity and the standard model, which, despite its complexity, encapsulates nearly everything from subatomic particles to galaxies. Given this profound simplicity, it's natural to entertain the notion that everything was intricately planned in advance, suggesting the hand of a cosmic designer behind the universe's elegance. Michio Kaku sees this as a compelling argument for the existence of a divine creator. However, science operates on principles of verifiability and falsifiability. Unlike fields like literary studies, where complexity often grows over time, physics, on the other hand, aims for simplicity and logical coherence, relying on a concise set of equations to describe the universe. But this does not mean that there is nothing meaningful outside of science. For example, we cannot disprove a negative statement if we try to prove the absence of dragons, there will always remain the possibility of their existence in uncharted places. Eliezer Yudkowsky, renowned artificial intelligence researcher and popularizer of rationality, thus emphasizes the importance of scientific falsifiability. The power of a theory lies not in what it allows, but in what it forbids. If you can come up with an equally convincing explanation for any result, you have zero knowledge. Hence, inquiries into the existence of a divine entity and the purpose of the universe persist as insoluble, lying beyond the scope of conventional scientific inquiry due to their unverifiability. Addressing the need for an explanation of the prime mover posited by Thomas Aquinas, there is a keen interest in understanding the origin of the theory of everything itself. Michio Kaku contends that the theory of everything must exist because it represents the only mathematically coherent framework, devoid of contradictions present in other theories. During the theory's development, challenges such as infinite divergences or symmetry, breaking anomalies, emerge. It appears that there exists only one theory unencumbered by these constraints. Our universe cannot feasibly exist in 15 dimensions as this would lead to contradictions, as corroborated by string theory, where quantum corrections often indicate compatibility only with 10 or 11 dimensions. This addresses Einstein's query regarding whether God had a choice in formulating a theory of everything. There exists a singular equation capable of accurately describing our universe, as all other equations are mathematically incongruous. While this equation may possess an infinite number of solutions, it remains a singular equation. This brings us to another interesting question. Why does something exist but not absolute nothing? In quantum physics, absolute nothing does not exist. As we know, black holes are not absolutely black, and they gradually evaporate. Similarly, in quantum theory, the minimum energy is not zero. Even in a state of minimum energy, atoms are still subject to quantum fluctuations, because the complete absence of energy would violate the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So where did the Big Bang come from? Michio Kaku writes, most likely it was a quantum fluctuation in nothingness. Even nothingness, or pure vacuum, is continuously foaming with particles of matter and antimatter, which arise in pairs in the vacuum and then disappear again in the same vacuum. It is in this way that something arose out of nothing. 
Hawking called this phenomenon space-time foam, an infinite number of microscopic universes emerging from the vacuum and disappearing back into it. These universes exist imperceptibly, each of them smaller than an atom. From time to time, one of these universes diverges, dissolving into the vacuum, initiating an inflationary phase and giving rise to a new universe. Thus, our universe did not arise from absolute nothing, but from quantum fluctuations of the original nothing. While many universes dissipate, ours persists and continues to expand. Two major religions, Christianity and Buddhism, offer opposing views on the existence of a creator. Christianity holds that God created the world at a specific point in time. Georges Lemaitre, a Catholic theologian and physicist, saw no contradiction between Einstein's Big Bang Theory and the Bible. On the contrary, Buddhism lacks the concept of a deity and asserts that the universe has no beginning or end, only eternal nirvana. The challenge is to reconcile these divergent views. Either the universe has a beginning or it does not. There are no intermediate possibilities. Interestingly, the multiverse theory presents a fresh angle on this apparent contradiction. It suggests that while our universe may indeed have had a beginning, as depicted in the Bible, the inflationary theory proposes that Big Bangs occur frequently, spawning numerous bubble universes. These universes can expand into a broader space akin to nirvana in cyberspace. Consequently, our universe originates as a three-dimensional bubble within a larger 11-dimensional nirvana where new universes are continually emerging. It turns out that the concept of the multiverse allows us to integrate the creationist mythology of Christianity with Buddhist nirvana into a single theory that is consistent with all known physical laws. Michio Kaku writes, I believe we create our own meaning in the universe. It is too easy and simple to look back to some guru who came down from the mountain heights and brought us the meaning of the universe. It takes effort to understand and appreciate the meaning of life. If it is presented in a ready-made form, the whole idea of meaning is lost. The meaning of life, available for free, would lose its meaningfulness. Anything that has meaning is obtained through struggle and sacrifice and is worth fighting for. If the universe is destined for eventual demise, it becomes challenging to argue for any inherent meaning within it. Physics has effectively issued a death sentence for the universe. Debates surrounding the universe's meaning and purpose may appear futile in light of its inevitable fate, particularly the prospect of the big freeze. The second law of thermodynamics dictates that everything within a closed system will ultimately decay and vanish. However, there remains a glimmer of hope that a blend of quantum theory and relativity could offer a reprieve for the universe. While the second law of thermodynamics applies to closed systems in an open system where energy can be sourced externally, this rule may be circumvented. Consider an air conditioner, which, powered by external energy, cools the air, or life on Earth, where solar energy fuels the transformation of food into new life. Another analogy is found in mole holes seemingly enclosed within our universe. Yet, in the future, scientific advancements might enable us to construct a passage through space and time, fortified by negative energy and the quantum Casimir effect. Future generations could potentially attain Planck energy levels, leveraging advanced technology to journey to a different, more hospitable universe. Thus, quantum gravity may transcend mere theoretical speculation, serving as a cosmic lifeline, enabling intelligent life to transcend the constraints of the second law of thermodynamics and migrate to a more favorable cosmic environment. Hence, the theory of everything assumes a significance beyond its elegant mathematical framework. It might emerge as humanity's ultimate salvation. As Stephen Hawking wrote, if we do discover the complete theory, then in time its basic principles will become available to the understanding of everyone, not just a few scientists. Then all of us, philosophers, scientists, and ordinary people, will be able to participate in the discussion of why we and the universe exist. The answer to this question will be the complete triumph of the human mind, for then we will know God's design. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos are released.